I guess I could have played Maryland O oh Maryland. But come on, this is a lot more fun. I didn't know the words to that and all that. I think that's the Raven song now. It's kind of interesting. Gino Marchetti died. Teddy died and all that, and all the Baltimore people are said, the hell with you. The Ravens are, you know, very much, you know, no, the Ravens are the ones saying, you know, it is with great sadness that we talk about the passing of Gino Marchetti and all this. Um, there you have it. My, my Preakness story that I have, it, it was the year, it, it was right before I moved to Tennessee. This was, was 15 years old. I was ninth grade in... Uh, that you know, in morning announcements, I need a loudspeaker, give morning announcements over the you know, loudspeaker and all this. And there was a mention of you know, Mr. Bradford, who was this real character, and he was from Baltimore, and that we he was a teacher, my seventh grade geography teacher. He was a real character, he was one of my he was a Baltimore sports fan. I mean, he grew up there, and he you know, I, I remember talking to him the day after the Colts moved. And I went to him and said, what do you think about the Colts moving? And he just couldn't, you know, it's like, no, I can't talk. We're, we're going to do the lesson here. You know, I mean, that, that was, that, I, I remember that very well. Anyway, it's three years later and, all, and they make an announcement and they mentioned something about clear choice on the announcement. I mean, there's like a joke told before the morning announcements over the, why are they? Gets up and he says, yeah, I, you know, a, a group of us teachers all went down to Baltimore. And all the way down, Mr. Bradford was telling us about this great choice, clear choice that he, you know, that's the horse we should all bet on. Finished dead last. <laughs> he was trained by Dwayne Lucas. So, you know, that's, that's the thing. And I guess, I, all right. That's what I remember at the Preakness Stakes right there. And yes, the as you heard, the Baltimore Colts marching band, which would always uh, play. I assume they still do. Hey, Colton Jumper. I think Colton Jumper, in many ways, I'm going to ask you this. Is Colton Jumper the last football hero at Tennessee? Maybe he won't be the last one they ever have. But to date. Some may say Josh Dobbs. But to me, it was Jumper who didn't get off to a good start in his career, but he came on injuries, you know, and Kirkland went down, filled in middle linebacker spot, and played really well. Be a major Achilles heel for the Vols. I don't know if they can beat Florida now. I don't know if they can beat Georgia. This is back 2016. Remember this? And what did Jumper do? Rushing attacks. Former walk-on. And Jumper played, I, I mean, I thought he was defense. I don't know who won Tennessee off the top of my head. Defensive MVP in 2016, forgive me. You know, but to me, if I'm giving the award, I would have given it to Jumper. I mean, he really stepped in well. I was impressed. I remember his first game was against Ohio. Bobcats actually gave Tennessee quite the game that day. But he shut down the... Uh, Bobcats running attack. I remember they went for it fourth and one twice. He shut them down. You know, I mean, Jumper, I was impressed. Anyway, uh, he's from Chattanooga, and he had signed a free agent contract with the Saints. But then the AAF came about. All right, and he'd playing time. Started playing for the Memphis Express. I know the Express stunk. Don't get me wrong. But uh, he was a starting safety and linebacker, jumper, middle linebacker. But anyhow, uh, he is now back with the Saints. I'm kind of excited. I mean, this is like, you know, there's a guy that I liked, Colton Jumper. And he did eventually get the scholarship, you know, and all this. Uh, 6'2", 229 pounds. Uh Last season with the Saints, he made five tackles on defense, one on special teams, blocked a punt before he was waived, but the Saints brought him back 
to participate in their rookie mini camp this past weekend on a tryout basis, and they signed and they announced Jumper that the Saints as one of twelve tryout players they signed after the mini camp. So after the AAF, maybe Jumper has a second chance. There you go. By the way, Keller Chris did not make the Steelers, so my uh, idea of what if Keller Chris beats out Josh Dobbs? Now that didn't happen. You know who did make it so far? Guards in the FCS. Uh, and that's big. I, I don't know if, you know, th that's a tough nut to crack with the Steelers because he's not beating up Ben Roethlisberger. And the last two years, the Steelers have drafted quarterbacks, first Josh Dobbs and then Mason Rudolph. I think in the idea of trying to, you know, prepare them for the day, whether it happens next year or I guess three years down the line or whenever, when Roethlisberger hangs it up. Of course, I'm not of the opinion that's how you get a new quarterback. I think that you draft them in the first round. You know, Drew Locke and, and the Broncos are doing maybe something like that second round. Because I happen to like Drew Locke. I think he was better than the second round pick. I thought he should have gotten the first. But, uh, you know, for the Bengals, I remember he was drafted second round in 84. But I don't remember if he started as a rookie. I mean, he started relatively young and beat out Ken Anderson. Remember that? You know, Boomer was a very good quarterback. I think he won the ACC uh, three times at Maryland. I think that's right. The star quarterback of the ACC at Maryland. And so, you know. Anyway, uh, Saints like Vols. I mean, you remember Kingsport's Malik Foreman? He signed with them. Didn't make it. Survived the last cut. But, you know, and that might be Colton Jumper. But, I mean, obviously Alvin Kamara. We've got Shy Tuttle on the team. You want to go back to the old days, and I don't know, Bobby Scott, the irony there. By the way, Ethan Wolf, I told you about him, the former uh, Titan. He signed with the Panthers, and yeah, he did sign. He'll be in training camp and all that. So Keller Chris did not make the Steelers for their mini camp. Devin Hodges did. I mentioned this for all those people, remember when I famously, and I will continue to say this because I really don't, I think that one of the Achilles heel for the Vols this football season. Logan Marchi was a better quarterback than Jared Guarantano, and I'm still not convinced that he wasn't. And I'm going to give you a stat here that I've said before, but think about this. Basically, Logan Marchi started half a season at Temple. And in that half a season, he still has more 200... I know he came on uh, just, uh, just before the halfway point of the 2017 season, but in a season and a half plus, Guarantano has four 200-yard passing games. We're talking about 200-yard passing games here. You know, not 300. 200-yard passing games. And Logan Marchi up at Temple, yeah, he had five in half a year against the Achilles heels for the, uh, for the Vols uh, this year is the quarterback position. So we'll see what goes on. But I, one of the things I was going to mention is that I remember when I said this, people were saying, well, if Marchie's so good, why is he at ETSU? The fact that a guy is playing in an FCS school does not necessarily make him worse than someone who is playing even at the most prestigious conference in major college football, the SEC. Let's face it, when Steve McNair was at Alcorn State, I think there are plenty of SEC teams he could have started on. And that was an era with, you know, Peyton Manning and Tim Couch and whoever else. I guess maybe it wasn't Tim Couch. He came on later, forgive me. But, you know, it was that era. State, uh, there are plenty of FCS quarterbacks out there. And, yeah, I still stand by that. I'm not a big guy. I, I, Guarantano, I think, was put into a position where he was played very conservatively. The Vols want to win big. They got to take the reins off.